Hey there. You want to see something cool? This is a video that I shot and edited earlier in June that is both one of my favorite videos as well as one of my favorite combos that I have ever written. Ever been curious how I write a combo and what goes in versus what doesn't? This time around, I documented the process meticulously and now I'm going to share it with you. Drex here from Drex Factor Poi, sharing with you the love of poi spinning and flow arts to benefit your body and brain. And today, I'm walking you through my process for choreographing poi dance and how I wrote a personal favorite. Before we dive then I just want to give a quick shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Fire Mecca, Flow Fests, Flow Toys, Juggling Calling, Pyroterra Light Toys, Spinballs, and Ultra Poi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can learn more about all these amazing businesses and what they're doing to support flow artists like yourself by checking out the links that I've got down in the description of this video. And special thanks to non-business friends of the channel, Johnny Howard, Lane Machinsky, and Becca Beckonen. Thank you all so very much for your support for my work and my mission. So first up, an obvious question. Where did the idea for this combo come from? There's a dancer that I follow on Instagram named Kelly Erdman who's done several different experiments showcasing choreography that utilizes some post-production work to stabilize the footage around her head. This makes it so that you can easily cut to her performing the same choreo in other locations and the transition looks more or less seamless. I actually already experimented with this idea earlier in the year. I shot a different combo that was heavily based upon some choreo I'd written previously as a test to see whether a similar video format could work for me. Given that it's the second most viewed video on my Instagram at this point, I'd say the answer to that question was yes. So I wanted to do it again, but this time write a combo specifically for this style of video. This meant that I needed to center it around a few basic ideas. One, my head needed to move around a lot, but stay focused towards the camera as much as possible. What makes this format work is that if the head isn't moving, but the background is moving around, it looks super trippy. But the effect isn't as pronounced if the head isn't moving very much, so just doing a tech tree combo would completely defeat the purpose. Second, I needed to be able to do this combo with rock solid consistency. I needed to nail the placement of my poi and body parts time and time again, or the cuts between different locations would look so different that the effect would be lost. That meant no tricks that I couldn't nail 100% of the time and my form had to be nearly identical every take. Next, the combo had to work inside of a relatively small area. I could move stage left and stage right, but if I moved too far to either side, I would wind up out of the frame. I'd be shooting from several meters away with a wide angle lens, so that would definitely help, but fundamentally I'd need to stay within a pretty small area, and more importantly, hit my marks within that area time and time again. Finally, the combo needed to loop. It needed to end in the same place that it began, so I could create the illusion of it operating on an endless loop. That meant writing a combo that would return to where it started, not just with poi movements, but also with where I was on stage. With those rules in mind, I got to work. The combo started with two very specific ideas and grew from there. On May 8th, I started work on the combo with a flow session in my apartment. I didn't intend to start work on a new combo that night, but two ideas came to me that seemed irresistible to experiment with. The first idea was to link together two tricks that I absolutely adore but had never thought to combine in this specific way before point isolations, and a cap versus pendulum anti-brid. I realized I could exit the cap versus pendulum off to my right hand side by taking the moment right before they both drop down toward my left and instead abort the anti-brid by point isolating both poi and moving my body over to the right. The result would feel almost like an anti-gravity illusion with the poi left hanging there in space. But what to do next? I took the poi off to my right and started spinning it in horizontal plane, moving the hand attached to it up and down the tether for the poi that was still left hanging in space. I have no idea where this idea came from, and in my head I referred to it as the UFO. And at first, I had a devil of a time doing it without tangling it with the other tether. Right off the bat, I thought the UFO looked awesome, and my first thought for where this went next was to end it with a spiral wrap high above my head, unwrap to a float, and then drop the poi into a behind the back catch. I struggled real hard with the catch though. Because the momentum of the poi had changed so much with so many rapid plane changes, 
I couldn't be certain of how they'd drop, and that made both the catches a challenge to land as well as looking pretty sloppy. I could never get the catches to look clean even when I nailed them, so I quickly abandoned this idea. On May 9th, I went to the drum circle at Malcolm X Park in Columbia Heights, and I had an idea. Since the point isolations were pulling me off to stage right, I'd jump out of the UFO back to stage left using something resembling a butterfly kick and a horizontal flower. I also got it into my head to attempt a behind the back waist strap from a dead stop right after the jump. What should come after the waist strap wasn't really clear, so I ad libbed a bunch of body tracers and a behind the head spiral wrap. The body tracers looked crude and improvised because they were, but that jump was definitely a keeper. The next day, I revisited this choreo and made one major change. I added plies to the UFO to add some level changes. I knew I got the best results out of those head tracking videos the more body movement I could throw in, so this would add an extra layer of interest to this section. I was still trying to make the behind the back waist strap work at this point, and trying out some other body tracers to get back to the pendulum versus cap. This part really wasn't working though, and I knew that even at the time. In the week after though, I got inspired by a video of Wojtas Dolbenko that Flowtoys had released. I've long wanted to learn some of the work that he does putting the tether through, around, and under his legs, and I discovered that one of the jumps he did in this video wasn't as hard as I thought it was. I wondered, what if I added that jump immediately after my own jump, taking the poi from high to low as I traveled across the stage? On May 17th, I spent a good portion of the afternoon trying to add this element and workshopping the choreo in general, and several important changes came out of it. I quickly discovered that the plies during the UFO had created a small problem. I had a tendency to dip my entire body with the plies, and I really wanted the static poi to remain isolated in space. I found I got the best results if I extended my arm as I did the plie to compensate for the level change. I did try to keep the idea of getting into a real base turn from a dead stop alive by performing a stall with a head check and then dropping from that into a crosser. Just like the waist strap from the dead stop though, it looked super awkward. I was also struggling with the question of how to loop the choreo, how to get from the crosser back to pendulum versus cap. I tried inserting a favorite transition from standard hand placement to anti-brid placement by way of wall plane anti-spin flowers and performing a cap across the top, but it didn't have a lot of body movement to it, and I really didn't like that. When I tried adding Voigt's leap to my choreo, it did seem to match with the direction and momentum of the poi, but it also just didn't look good to me no matter what I did with it. My body positioning looked awkward, and it kind of killed the momentum of the first jump. I realized at a certain point that I was fighting to try and insert somebody else's style into my own choreo, and just wound up abandoning the idea in favor of doing something that felt more like me. I thought to replace it with a horizontal spiral wrap above my head and perform a short coupe to give the combo a little bit of a rebound to head back the other way. But what would come after to get me over to stage right? One idea was to do a kind of chane with an extension. Another was a grapevine step with a meltdown. I actually did bring part of this idea back later on in the choreo process, but overall I didn't think as a whole it really worked. Another idea I tried very hard to make work was to drop down coming out of that spiral wrap and performing a little horizontal flower on my way through. The idea here was to do a level change to try and get more body movement out of a video that was going to be very heavily based in head tracking. I also experimented with a brief section at the end where I switched to a one-handed butterfly and briefly walked towards the camera before doing a throw and focus shift on the catch before heading back upstage. I still love this idea, but I knew it wouldn't work for the type of video that I wanted to make because I couldn't have significant movements going down or upstage, only stage left or stage right. I might use this idea somewhere else in the future though. I really loved the first part of this combo, but I felt kind of lost on the rest of it. I put it down for a few days, but then on May 23rd, I had a breakthrough on the second part of the choreo. Despite my directive to create all original choreo for this particular video, I tried adding in a brief trick combo that I've become quite fond of over the years, and it definitely made something click for me in the latter half of the combo. Here's what it looked like. 
I would do snakes and split time same direction, and then a hand switching throw before performing a Udistall turn and switching into Zan's Diamond. Not only did this incorporate a lot of body movement and intricate tech, it also stood in stark contrast to the first half of the combo that was dominated by repetition. I knew the repetition in the first part of the combo built tension, so having a very rapid series of transitions seemed like a good way to pay off that tension, and I love how this particular set of tricks pays off by making transitions happen in places you wouldn't expect. In particular, the transition from the Udistall to Zan's Diamond just feels like the momentum should not work, and yet it does so beautifully. In order to make sure I was getting in as much body movement as possible, I resolved to keep my body slightly crouched and essentially do lunges to either side with my upper body, as my hands were performing the same movements to accentuate them and make sure enough was going on in this section to still make it interesting when I got to doing the head tracking. At one point, I did experiment with removing the movement back to stage right, and just switched to doing the snake to poi throw on stage left after the leap and spiral wrap. This also meant that I would drop out of Zan's diamond into the pendulum versus cap anti-brit, and it was definitely less than ideal. Not only did it keep the combo tucked into too tightly a small space, but it wasn't going to be very interesting when the head tracking entered into the picture. This could have worked if I didn't intend to do much, if any, movement to stage right or left, but doing so was pretty explicitly the purpose of doing all this choreographing. I ultimately decided to bring back the movements to stage right and make it travel more. But how to get from point A to point B? I knew I wanted to arrive at the snake into hand switching throw, so it was going to be helpful to end this movement on something that was in split time same direction. I brought back an element of that grapevine meltdown and just performed the end of it. I found this gave me an opportunity to play with contrasts. My body would go from very tightly wound to opening up broadly to each side. There was a kind of elasticity in this transition that I really liked, compressing and expanding my body. So how to get there? I was kind of surprised to find that, despite assuming that I'd have to do some kind of zero-point plane break, that I could instead more or less bend my planes from horizontal to vertical plane when I arrived at stage right. This shouldn't work. It should look sloppy, but somehow it didn't. My best guess as to why is that the body tracing elements of the meltdown are helping to smooth out the plane bend, but I'll confess I don't really understand why this worked from a visual standpoint but I'm sure glad that it did. This was also where I figured out how to get back into the beginning of the combo. I decided to reference the idea that had started it all off by stalling out of Zan's diamond and dropping both poi into pendulums before heading back to stage left and performing point isolations with both poi to accentuate that return to the beginning. In later takes, I would add a chasse to this movement to make it dancier. Great way to add body movement and cool poi moves. I finished out the day with the combo really close to what would turn out to be the final version. My one remaining challenge was what move to use between the spiral wrap and the meltdown to get to stage right. That crouching horizontal flower was a great idea, but it felt so awkward. I felt like I was fighting the momentum of both my body and my poi to get to stage right, and the results just did not look good to me. I wound up ad-libbing some additional footwork during the UFO plies that a part of me is sad that I forgot to hold on to. I actually like what this could have been, but it got lost in cleaning up the rest of the choreo, and in all honesty, it was probably best to keep things simple, to make my life easier and make sure I was more consistent between takes. I'd actually forgotten I did this until I went back and watched all these old videos. But something real exciting happened on my final two takes of the combo for the day. I was getting real tired at the end of the practice session, and my mind was starting to wander. I misjudged my body momentum coming out of the spiral wrap, and rather than abort the attempt, I just went with it, and rather than crouching down with my horizontal flower, I instead exploded out with a turn that included an arabesque. My last time through the combo, I tried it again, just because it felt so good the first time. I didn't hold out hope that this was going to produce a good result, mostly because the first time it was an accident, and I wanted this level change to go down instead of up at that moment. Also, neither attempt was particularly clean or aesthetically pleasing. But what this did have going for it was that it worked with the momentum, and if nothing else, I could see the potential for what this could be if I cleaned it up. So as I went back through the footage, I noticed a few things that really needed to be cleaned up. For starters, the point isolations coming out of that pendulum versus cap were a little hit or miss. Sometimes they would land, and the moment of having the poi just seem to hang there in space would hit. And sometimes it just looked like I was stepping to the side with the poi, and the contrast 
with the anti-braid was completely lost. Second, I needed to be more clear about my head movement after going to stage right. Sometimes I would focus shift to suggest movements left or right, but I wasn't being consistent about it, and with the point of this video being tracking my head between different takes, I was going to need to be in order to make the edits work. I needed to make choices here and stick with them. Finally, as much as I loved the chasse, it also messed with my perception of where the poi were on stage, and the point isolation was getting a little bit lost in the process. What was coming out was looking more like a cat eye, so I needed to keep the first parts of that movement further over to stage right if I was going to make that point isolation land. And this brings us to the final practice session when all the pieces finally came together for me. Knowing I'd be hitting that turn with the arabesque, I put a lot more intention into the position of the poi as I was doing so, and finally, that movement to stage right just clicked. But there was also one other final piece of the puzzle to put into place. On one take, I had a happy accident. As I was exiting out of the chasse with the point isolations, I brought my hands and poi around in a static spin versus extension anti-brid before dropping into pendulum versus cap. I actually didn't even know that I had done it until I went back to watch the video, but the moment I saw it, I realized it was a keeper. It did a great job of resetting the combo, and it contrasted beautifully between the chasse point isolation and the cat versus pendulum at the top of the combo. It solved a problem I didn't even know that I had. So with all that information in hand, I went to go shoot the combo on June 1st. I used the same four locations that I had before, mainly because there's not a lot of big walls close to where I live that are more or less flat and don't have a lot going on with them, but also because it was a process that I was already used to. I set up my camera an identical distance from each wall and shot myself performing the combo no less than four times in a row in each location. I then imported the footage into Final Cut Pro and used their built-in motion tracker to isolate my face in each piece of footage before editing them together and inserting cuts between each scene. And yes, I set Kate Bush as the background music because I had just watched the first half of season four of Stranger Things. I didn't choreograph this to music, but I did try to make sure that it was of an appropriate length that a song in common time would have around six complete bars of music that could play over it to help with the looping effect. In the end, I'm really happy with the choreo that I wrote, and I guarantee it'll make another appearance at some point. This was really fun to choreograph, and I hope you enjoyed this look behind the scenes at my process for writing choreography and making this video. Want more information on how that video got shot and edited itself? Leave me a comment and let me know. Maybe I'll do a follow-up. Did you get anything out of this video? Please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe to keep the conversation going and to help other people find this video. This video would not have been possible if not for the wonderful support of all of these amazing people right here. These are my Flow patrons over on Patreon and they, along with the people listed down in the description, help to make this video and all the videos on my channel possible. Thank you one and all for your support. Do you like my videos? Do you like my flow sessions, vlogs, reviews, combos, and more? I'm on a mission to bring poi spinning and flow arts to the wider world and help people connect with their brains and their bodies. So help me do it. Head on over to patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi and sign up. You can do that at the link in the description or the card that just popped up if you're watching on YouTube. There you can get access to a whole host of awesome rewards and help me along in my mission. Do check that out, please and thank you. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you're interested in more videos about how I create my videos and my process for doing so, I'll go ahead and link to a playlist of videos that cover other topics in that genre down in the description or up on screen if you're watching on YouTube. Make sure to get outside and flow today, and I hope this inspired you to play with your own approach to creating poi choreography. Have a good one, and I'll see you with a new video on Wednesday. Peace.